Okay. Uh, most people know what a hologram is. Well, actually, most people don't know how a hologram is created or what it is ultimately. Um, they've never, almost nobody has seen true art holography. And uh, true art holography is actually, I'm trying to keep the reflection out. You have to have the proper uh, angle of light uh, for viewing, and that is uh, difficult. Um, holding this without getting the reflection of the wall behind me. But let me try to do that for you. Okay. This is obviously a Nautilus of a real Nautilus shell. And, uh... Let's, uh, you know, since everything is about light, and even if you're interested in field theory or photography, this should be of interest to you. Now, in talking about photography, we're not talking about holography, but we are ultimately talking about light. But when we talk about photography, we're talking about your camera only, doesn't matter what camera it is on Earth, only captures one sort of light. And uh, that is a reflected light from the subject. Now, obviously, sometimes it is transmissive light, like uh, from a neon sign. But uh, in general, we're talking about reflected light, uh, either from a strobe or the sun. But what differentiates out holography, and why are we able to get three... Let me show you another hologram here. Why are we able to get three-dimensionality out of... Let me hit the focus button here. Three-dimensionality out of a two-dimensional plane see there's are lasers on either side of this uh, robotic or computer man this is actually a small but extremely good art hologram it's much better in person why are we able to get three-dimensionality and uh, this is of course a photographic positive out of uh, the two-dimensional uh, image of course perfectly flat out of a hologram you have to understand coherency, and even modern physics has never defined coherency. Well, you'll find many equations on phase and phase coherency. You're talking about like incoherent light versus coherent light. Okay, well, that's a nice description, but what about the true explanation? We're talking about phase disparity. Let's take a look at something really, really simple so that you can understand holography in its absolute most fundamental simplex principle. Okay, down here we have a laser emitting coherent light. Here we have a beam splitter. Over here we have a mirror. And over here we have a photographic film. Over here we have an object. It could be a person's face. It could be the Nautilus shell that I just showed you. We have a reference beam which was reflected off of a mirror and strikes our photographic film. That same beam is split and scatters onto our object and then onto the film. And the reference beam combined with the reflected beam, the scattering off of the three-dimensional object, those two combined produces the hologram by interference and diffraction. But the easiest way to understand that is what we're talking about, is we're talking about a coherent reference source relative to an incoherent source that has been reflected off of the primary subject or the object it's coherent super, uh, superpositions of optical wave fields. The perceived dimensionality here is due to the reference beam and the out-of-phase reflective beam and their interference coincidentally upon the photographic film. And we've actually been able to replace photographic film with uh, digital sensors to uh, reproduce digital holograms, of course. A holographic recording requires a secondary light beam and the reference beam to be directed onto the recording medium. So now the question becomes is not what's the difference between regular photography and holography and I've got a a link below from a guy that I've known, no I have no connection, I don't get any kickbacks that produces these art holograms. You can check the link below for that if you're interested in snagging a true art hologram for your house. Um, this was made by this guy, and uh, he used to own, when I was really young, well, not really young, when I was in Las Vegas, he used to own a hologram store in the mall in Las Vegas, and they're the most beautiful things I've ever seen. And uh, the light uh, was projected down on them at a certain angle. And let me hit the focus again here. There we go. And step out of the way so you could see it. Um, but 
you know, we're not talking about the holograms on your credit card here. We're talking about true art holograms. And the dimensionality and depth on them, if you have them in your hands, is rather spectacular. But understanding the nature of light, what we're talking about literally is a magnetic um, divergence which is reflected off of the object and we have a coherent point of reference and that coherent reference from the reference beam that is split up interferes with the scattered light which becomes out of phase so the the uh, coherent light that is projected onto this object and then is reflected onto the photographic medium interferes with the other half of the split beam and the interference of that produces on this two-dimensional object a three-dimensional hologram. It doesn't matter whether the recording medium is actual film like this is um, as originally done or since we have a digital uh, holographic uh, sensors now for recording a digital hologram. It doesn't make any difference. The point is, is that the only way the three-dimensional holograms are able to be produced is by uh, combining the coherent light um, perturbation with the out of phase other half of the laser beam uh, coherent light and the interference phase of that brings the light into an interference out of phase pattern that recreates the true three dimensionality and depth of the original object which was shot with half of the reference beam let me focus again shot with a reference beam to create that true art hologram. And if you actually understand the field theory behind that, it's rather fascinating. People don't really understand what the implications of what that means. And of course, now we're just getting into a holographic uh, data storage. I mean, stuff that we used to talk about in Star Trek is actually a reality now where we're able to do true holographic data storage. This is now an actuality. I mean, just imagine a roll of film of this stuff and where you have a multi-dimensional on two-dimensional plane recording of uh, data. And uh, that's rather fascinating. But if you understand field theory and the understanding of magnetism and counter space, then uh, all of these things are possible. That and a lot more, actually. So anyway, if you're interested in a true art hologram, Check the link below. It's a guy I've known for six years. Uh, I haven't talked to him in many years, but uh, he still has his uh, store up where he sells uh, true art holograms if you're interested. Because most people have never seen or held a true art hologram before. And uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.